Cameron Leslie, congratulations. You have been nominated in the Laureus World Sports Awards. How goddamn cool is that, mate? Yeah, it's pretty crazy, eh? It's uh, <laughs> unexpected. I feel like a little bit of a fish out of water, but it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty humbling. You've been nominated for the World Sports Person with a Disability and uh, nominated alongside, I'll run through a list in a second, but I've got to tell you that there has only been a handful of, just a handful of New Zealanders that have won a laureus. Dan Carter, separately the All Blacks, Sir Peter Blake, uh, Levi Sherwood. So you'd be joining a pretty exclusive club if you do. <laughs> oh, hey, mate, I'm just stoked to be nominated. I, I don't think I'll stand too much of a chance with the winning of it, but uh, oh, it's pretty pretty cool just to be nominated and make it as far through the process as this. And geez, You never really know what the judges and all that sort of stuff might make of it all and how they might place you. So, yeah, we'll just see what happens. Cameron, you know, please forgive me if I'm clumsy about anything, but I want to ask you just a couple of, you know, questions about your disability, about, you know, just how 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 you are, who you are. Is that okay? Yeah, go for it. I'm all for asking questions and giving answers to them, particularly around disability. Yeah, okay. Well, you don't have any legs. What happened? <laughs> yeah, I was, just, I was just born with my disability, so I've got nothing below the knee. I've got pretty much to the knee on both sides. Uh, yeah, I've got one thumb on my right arm, um, full arm otherwise, and then on my left arm I've got just below the elbow. So, yeah, no rhyme or reason. I've got two older brothers and an older sister, all of which have their limbs. So, yeah, <laughs> who knows? Maybe I could give you some pretty crude examples of what my dad reckons happened, but oh. I'm probably not <laughs> fit for, fit for radio. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, I mean, look, I wanted to ask that question because obviously if you're, if you're born with all your limbs and things and then, and then you lose them, I mean, it actually, it's, it's, it's a completely different set of circumstances, isn't it? So you're a, you're a man who's just grown up, this is how I am. Yeah, this is exactly it. I've, this is all my body, all I've ever known. Uh, and geez, I often say to people, hey, like, Farah, if I was to lose my, my limbs or have the, you know, acquire the body that I've got now through an accident or whatever, um, it would be quite a shock to the system. I've, I've like... I do think I'm fortunate for having been born with it because I've been able to spend my whole life learning how to do stuff, finding coping strategies with getting around things like, geez, I'm a dad with two kids and yeah, just trying yeah. to figure out how to pick up something that imagine being going from having, you know, your arms perfectly functioning to having hands and stuff like that to pick up things off the ground to then have to relearn how to do it with with all that sort of stuff is uh would be really challenging. How do the kids respond? Oh, it's just normal for them. Yeah, <laughs> what was uh, my son's words for today? He's talking about someone, he's like, "Do they have circle legs like you? Have they got legs like you?" <laughs> it's just uh, he's to- like they're totally aware that dad dad's got a disability and dad's a bit different in some ways, but um, they don't really care. You know, I still jump on the tramp with them, pick them up, carry them around, do everything you'd expect of your of your of your dad to do with you. Um, so yeah, it's just normal for them, and like I love it too. It's just it's really nice that they're going to grow up with such a different appreciation and and view of disability, eh? You know, again, if I ask anything that is clumsy or untoward, just tell me straight away, mate. Do you ever feel bitter? Have you ever felt bitter? Have you ever kind of wished that, oh, shit, I wish I was this or I wish I had this? Nah, I don't, there's no no chip on the shoulder for me. Just It just is what it is, right? Mum and Dad didn't mean for it to happen, and but he, yeah, there was no knowing that I was going to turn like this until I was born. And yeah, I full credit to Mum and Dad. They just yeah saw me as one of their kids and... My dad tells a real cute story of when I was born and in the delivery room picking me up off the doctors and saying, oh, you know, it's all because they were all bloody shit themselves. Where's the rest of this kid? And his dad going, oh, we don't really care. You know, we'll, he's ours and we'll love him just the same as everyone else. And he tells a story of taking me home to my, um, meeting my family. Like My sister's 10 years older than me. Um, and she unwrapped me and she's like, oh, dad, he's not even that bad and wrapped me back up and carried on playing. So, oh, wow. Um, yeah, so no, no, never had any sort of like issue with my disability or sort of felt unfair or anything like that. So it's just, just is what it is, and I don't really care. I, all I know is life as I have it. I, you know, geez, I'd be dangerous if I was born with full arms and legs. I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> and and have you always loved sport? And you and 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 when did you get into it? Because people, the, you know, the great thing about Cameron is that he's he, he's not just a Paralympian who, who who competes in the World Para Swimming Champs, also wheelchair All Blacks as well, mate. So you put yourself about. Yeah, yeah, no, I was brought up in a, in a sporting family. Yeah, all my brothers played rugby. My sister was into netball, and I was your classic uh, youngest youngest child dragged around to everything. And yeah, eventually, I found my own sport in swimming. And then, as I got older into those teenage years, uh, I was 
essentially chased down by this bloke Curtis to come and play wheelchair rugby. And um, yeah, I guess if I had a if I had access to team sport when I was younger, I would think I probably would have gone down that avenue earlier. But uh, yeah, it was only late teens that I was discovered a team sport, so I just loved that environment and. And, you know, rugby, combative, you know, we're a rugby nation, right? Like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the para equivalent of, of rugby as what we would know it as in, in New Zealand. Well, look, I've, I've only ever watched one game live, mate, and it was just awesome. It was ferocious. It was it was like watching supercars uh, with no limits or boundaries on it whatsoever. Yeah, it is exactly that. And uh, I don't know when you watch that game, but there's some big hitters in the game now in New Zealand and uh yeah, mate. He, I reckon Hayden, Hayden Barton Coots hits as bloody big as anyone in the game. He would probably be the hardest hitting spinal cord injury player going around. He's a, you know, big bloody. What is he? Probably six foot three, big dude who just will absolutely flatten you, take the chair out from underneath <laughs> you without you knowing, and you're. Before you know it, you've fucking smoked into his chair and you're on the ground. <laughs> it's quite something. What do you prefer? Cameron Leslie Liz- 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 Liz is with us. He's been nominated for the Laureus World Sports Awards, people. Uh, so what do you prefer? Do you prefer the swimming? Do you prefer the chair? What? Oh, it's hard because they're just so different, eh? Um, I love the team environment. I love travelling with rugby. Uh, they're just such a fun group. You know, just banter left, right and centre. Um, and you're all moving, you know, to the same sort of tune. Whereas in swimming, you're a little bit more selfish, if that's a way to put it. Like you're looking after yourself for your performance, and you know, someone might be off doing something, sunbathing or whatever, and I'm looking at that going, "Oh, bugger off! That's not the right thing to be doing." So I'm not going to go and you know, engage in being out in the sun for that long or whatever. Um, it's just so different, right? Like it's not. Um, it's hard. Like I enjoy the success in swimming, but that's me being competitive. Um, but I certainly enjoy the the team and the the travelling aspect of rugby. So it, I guess I like elements of both. But it's, I'm, I feel very lucky that I can do both sports and you know do them relatively well. And uh, I guess scratch that itch I've got in both areas. Well, June last year, World Para Swimming Champs, Formula Life, Gold, three silvers, set a new world best time in the men's 50 metre freestyle S4 and becoming the first swimmer in your category to go under 37 uh, seconds. That was later beaten, but I mean, it's a hell of an achievement. And then, you know, you jumped in the chair in October and went to the wheelchair rugby world champs as well. We finished eight there. So it's just a hell of a year for you. Has it been as, you know, frenetic start to this year? When do you get back into competing and stuff? Yeah, it was a hell of a year last year uh, and this year. It's gonna, there's quite a few trips on this year. Um, Competition-wise, uh, April is when it all starts with our national champs. Uh, and that's sort of a, it's a qualifier for world champs, but also onwards to Paris as well. So good chance to sort of hit some of those qualifying times and just tick those boxes early so you can just sort of get stuck into the preparation side of things and not have to worry about the you know, the bureaucracy of ticking boxes to allow any you know, selection and all that jazz. Um, so yeah, it'll start off in April, and I think last comp scheduled for the year is like October. Uh, it's a long year when you put the two sports together. Um, yeah, it, it will be some pretty cool competitions overseas and like chances to start qualifying for Paris for both swimming and rugby. So yeah, hopefully that all goes well this year. And worst case, yeah, early next year is when all that will be um, able to be parked up and you, know, you either know or you don't know whether you have qualified as a team or as an individual. So you're nominated uh, for the World Sports Person with a Disability uh, Award. You've got a wheelchair racer from Switzerland, a, a, a US ice hockey player, a Dutch wheelchair tennis player, a Norwegian para-alpine skier, and a US a cross-country skier and paracyclist as well. Uh, and, and all of these people, you know, I don't have to say, have overachieved as well. What are your chances, mate? <laughs> I don't rate my chances hugely when you look at what some of them have done. Yeah, one of them's broken about four world records and won a bloody marathon. That seems like a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's just on Saturday, and then on Sunday I'll go do something else. You know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but, oh, you never really know what the like the criteria might be or whatever it is. Uh, I mean, obviously there's the two sports element there. That I think there's one other who's doing cycling and, and another sport. So, oh. I don't, don't know what my chances are, to be honest, but they've all done some pretty impressive things. So it's pretty uh, pretty esteemed company to be lining up alongside. And it just must be, so you're, you're, you know, are you, are you planning to go as a family or do you just go to the awards on your own? How does how does this happen? Uh, unsure. Um, I love to take my family wherever we can, whether it be with sport or with holiday sort of stuff. It certainly helps because it's some long periods of time away from family and I, you know, I didn't become a dad to to leave them in the lurch and stuff like that for you know three four weeks at a time. It unfortunately happens like that sometimes, but if there is a chance to take them, I'd definitely be keen. And the names, you know, I mean, they're just they're just 
the biggest superstars in the world in sport are going to be at these awards. I mean, just imagine, mate, sitting in that room and being in amongst all of that. And you're there, you're there because you deserve to be there. You're there because you're in the final of an award. I don't know if it gets any better. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't, I don't know either. It is pretty uh, a crazy thought to think some of those like global names you'll be in the same room as and competing alongside. And there's lots of people uh, I'm involved who I work with and work alongside who just love to hear some of the stories from some of them. So I'm sure it'll be, um, if it, it yeah, if I can make it along, I'll be dead keen to go and, you know, get around and spin a few yarns. I, I don't mind a, a few spinning a few yarns. So it'll be good to sort of, I don't know, rub shoulders, see what you can learn from them. If you can pick up anything that might help yourself or others along the way, it'll be a be fascinating room to, to be around. Awesomely proud of you, mate, and I bet everyone's been saying that to you over the last 24 hours. Fantastic how getting this you know, press release and actually hearing this that you've been nominated. All the very best. Um, hopefully that you know we can catch up with you when you're actually after being on the podium and having that medal put around your neck or something. But thank you so much for your time. Really, really enjoyed talking. No worries. Thank you very much.